Oh, what's that thing here? Uh, I'm thinking of uh, calling this like basement thoughts. <laughs> In the basement, it's a very big house. And um, uh, yesterday I made a, was it yesterday, Dick? Whenever it was. You lose time when you're in a pandemic. <laughs> I made me a little concoction. It was a uh, real, real mango sliced up, and and this was uh, some uh, some juice I had um, called uh, it's a carrot, um, ginger, turmeric juice, uh, and um, that was in there. And then I put and I put some more <laughs> turmeric in it, powdered turmeric, and I forgot to mention I put some um, moringa powder in there too, you know, along with the um, vitamin C, you know, Buffett vitamin C powder, and like that. And then, then last night I had a salad, and uh, today I'm not eating because it's a Monday, and uh, um, I fast on Mondays. Usually, usually the day fast up until like 10 o'clock at night, I might break it with a, with a salad because from like, oh, well, they just say because 10 o'clock, I'm an hour behind, so, so some, some, no, it's 9 o'clock, oh, like nine o'clock, I think, only because uh, uh, Yvette, you know, Breaking Brown comes on, uh, you know, we're an hour after. I, sometime, I, did I listen to her, and then I think by 12 o'clock I can get to bed. Usually I go to bed somewhere between uh, 10 and 11, usually. But anyway, uh, so Monday is my fasting day, but I do do juice in the morning, so I'm, I'm taking this juice that I already made, right? Well, well, whatever that was I made yesterday, and I'm adding, I'm pimping it, I'm, you know, I'm enhancing it. With some uh, cranberry blueberry, just cranberry blueberry, uh, uh, apple blueberry, cranberry, and lemon juice uh, blend from concentrate. So this is from concentrate. This is terrible. Uh, ingredients: filtered water, uh, sufficient to reconstitute. Okay, organic apple juice concentrate. But concentrate just means well. I'm not gonna tell you what it means. I should look it up. I think I know what it means. I looked up, I think, a long time ago. I can remember from a long time ago. And I guess that's what basement thoughts are. Let me pour some of this cranberry. This blueberry in there. That's what it is, right? Is it cranberry blueberry? Yeah, cranberry blueberry. You know, they have the same properties. Only goes to, let me tell you about <laughs> propaganda. Oh, man. That's what we should talk about. You know, I read, I told people before, I read this article, right? It was this whole long article on, on the properties of cranberry, right? Then at the end, like the last paragraph, it said, basically, blueberry has the same properties. <laughs> I think it was put up by the cranberry lobby or whatever, whoever does that kind of stuff. Um, I played that huh? Oh, yeah. I made it with banana, that, that, that blend I made with banana yesterday, too. Still got that. I'm going to drink that. Um, but I'm thinking about the, those kind of propaganda things. You know, when I graduated undergraduate school um, uh, from Livingston College, uh, part of Rutgers University, my degree was in um, uh, communications and uh, let's say communications and, and English literature, a um, bunch of little stuff, film studies. You know, you know what I'm saying. But my concentration. Let me put this when I was graduating. At the time, remember this is seventy six, and uh, I had what we call a puppy look. I mean, it looked like I was on the way. You know what I mean? So people ask, "Oh, are you going to NBC, ABC, CBS?" You know, back then it was just those things. I think the the other the, 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 the other stuffs happened. The, the cable, no, there was um, cable was just starting. It doesn't matter. But they said, you know, I said, no, 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 because I was basically um, I am. Uh, Oh, this is the dog. We just, well, I just took the dog out for a walk this morning. Every morning we go out for a walk, and then uh, we come back. And so then I take a wash. Anyway, come on, Nada, get out of here. Do something else. Um, so anyway, well, so when I, they thought I was going to do that, but I said, no, no, because I didn't want to. I said, sooner or later, you know, I, I would have to, uh, they'd have to get rid of me. I have to get rid of them because uh, I couldn't, you know, I didn't want to reach their level of mediocrity. Basically, that was my, my line. Oh. And uh, but the real reason was that that was communications. I was trying to go back to theater because <laughs> I was trained in theater. You know, I'm trying to get back to theater. Ended up going to graduate. Doesn't matter. 
But when I got back to theater, actually, uh, in, the, in, the, in the early 80s, very early 80s, the theater had changed because I left in basically 70, so it's been 10 years, nine years since I've been back into theater in New York. And all those people had gone to Hollywood. They've been absconded to Hollywood, you know, for those black exploitation films. And to give you an example, you know, um, uh, the the um, the film Triple Man, for instance. If you look at Triple Man, you know, Bobby Hooks, I'm sorry, Robert Hooks, you know, but we call him Bobby, Negro Ensemble. He's one of the people that founded the Negro Ensemble Company. Robert Hooks, along with Douglas Turner Ward and Gerald S. Crone, they founded the Negro Ensemble Company. But then he was in Hollywood doing Trouble Man. Now, if you look at, if you see Trouble Man, that, that the pool hall scene, the first pool hall scene, you know, there's this guy that limps up to him, like, like you know, one of his gophers or whatever have you. And that's Edmund Cambridge, the great Edmund Cambridge. He was the last uh, uh, teacher I had at, um, at, at, at Nick Ronsampo Company, right? A great actor. In fact, I think he, he spent the rest of his life, really, he was uh, basically training other actors, you know, Hollywood actors, I guess. Anyway. Well, because when I got back to the theater scene, it was terrible. I didn't like it, you know. So I ended up doing a lot of technical work and doing and, and my and stage magic and stuff like that. But then I just sort of gravitated and I started doing audio drama. I gravitated to WBIR radio. But for them, I was doing archival things. I was taping things like, like you'd have a Ralph McGeehee, the ex-CIA kind of guy, you know, talking things like that. I just heard a thing. For, for instance, and this is what brings me to what we're going to talk about today, if you don't mind. I'm taking the dog out and coming back. We're taking this longer walk. I'm coming back. I usually do with music and my little dance and move and walk the dog. But then at the end, like a half hour at the end, I take another extra, another extra half hour walk. And this time I was listening to Jimmy Dore. And uh, I love living Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore is my man. If, yo, if I was something else, I'd be Jimmy Dore. Let me just say, because that boy, I'm telling you. Anyway, so he was talking about this whole thing where, um, uh, they found some money or so, some some say it was some plot. They they say it was some plot that they the Russians were playing the Af, paying the Afghans to kill American soldiers, which don't make no sense to anybody if you just listen to it. Anyway, maybe I'll put a link to that one because it's quite funny. Uh, um, because Jimmy Dawes, he's a comedian. He's a, like he says he's a jagoff comedian that smoke herb every morning, and if he knows, then everybody else should know. But obviously, people just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things he was saying was that uh, well, a tape that was being played in his show uh, was about uh, John Stockwell now I know John Stockwell because I've recorded John Stockwell, I recorded him saying when I was doing my uh, uh, archival work saying how he had Patrice Lumumba's body in the boot of his car, in the, in the, in the trunk of his car, you know, he had that that's that's the story, and I've got that on tape. I mean, I'm I'm because I'm taping all these forums and stuff like that. You know, Alambe and uh, and Samori Marksman, Alambe Brass, Samori Marksman, were doing these forums. I'm I'm the one that's taping a lot of these forums. Um, so uh, so so it comes out that basically John Stockwell is saying that uh, how it works is that you no, know, he would run other like say a journalist, you know. They'd be planting stories all around. I mean, different, like say, for instance, he was operating out of Angola, uh, but you know, he would he, he might take a, a get a, a reporter from Zambia, right, to plant a story there, and then a London reporter would pick it up. It's a whole intricate kind of thing they would be doing, right? But here's the trick. So, and that's how they spread the, the propaganda, you know. But some particular point. You know, um, uh, I realized as um, as I'm recording in order system, I realized one of the things that we that was was happening in the '80s, especially, is that there was a thing called low intensity warfare, right? Because Jimmy Carter, though he never started a war under Jimmy Carter, he never war was started. He had low intensity warfare under Jimmy Carter. Okay. Just so you know, other other presidents actually started wars. You know, uh, B B Bubba, you know, um, W, you know, Barack Obama. All these people started wars, right? Because Barack Obama, yes, he did. Well, come on, stop. You know, I know you love Obama, but you know that, that boy. You know, Libya. Come on, killing an African. Oh, let me not go off. Let me stand point. So um, so but but what came to me in all this stuff is that remember now Bezos owns Washington Post and what they would do. That, that a story that story uh, about um, the, um, uh, the the uh, Russians paying you know 
uh, the Afghans to kill Americans. Again, this don't make no sense. The Afghans had to play. They don't have to be paid to do what they do. Anyway, that was planted by some sort of agent, right? And it gets picked up and it gets confirmed by, well, it gets picked up by the Times, it gets confirmed by the uh, by the Washington Post. But remember, the Washington Post owned by Jeff Bezos, and he also has military contracts. So it's in his, it's, I'll let Jimmy explain that to you. But here's the thing that I that caught my eye. I was realized that in that 80s, in that time period, what happened was uh, when, when they was going after Jim, what happened is Jimmy Carter wanted to get rid of the CIA. Well, the, the Kennedys wanted to do it too, but Jimmy Carter, he actually did move to get rid of the CIA to, to diminish their whatever. And so what happened, they, they, you know, now if you got rid of the CIA back in them days, well, people had no jobs, you know what I mean? So they would do all sorts of nefarious things. So a, a sort of a shadow government started to appear out in the, um, uh, under, not under, because of Jimmy Carter. You know, that's the whole the Oliver North thing and, you know, the, the rake and the rest of the habit. That's all that all that thing, right? But what I realized when he was, when John Stock was saying that, the shadow government is one thing. Remember, these people wouldn't get paid, so they would do stuff. That whole thing about the drugs being uh, put into Los Angeles by, you know, uh, uh, Freeway Rick Ross and whatever, right? Uh, because they, they would send the, um, what do you say, they would, they, they would send the arms down to the, to, to Nicaragua in that area, right? And then, of course, they would, the drugs would come back to pay for this stuff. The drugs would come back into the black community, you know what I mean, decimating the black community for decades or whatever it is. And so that's how they sort of was getting paid, right? But also what happened now, if you think about it these days and days, and this it comes to mind because of that guy, uh, Anderson Cooper. You know, Anderson Cooper was uh, the mm-hmm. Vanderbilt kind of peoples, right? Well, Anderson Cooper, you know, his internship was with, with the CIA. Let's think about this. Let's think about this for a second. That means he has friends. You know, I mean, you, you do an internship, you meet people, you meet you know, influences, friends, and that's in the CIA. So he's, but he's, you know, so this so CIA buddy years later said, Hey, Anson, can you do this? You know, and he says, Oh, sure, you're my buddy. I know. So this does this without checking it, whatever happened. But now you have a lot of people in that position all over. He's, he's talking like hundreds of, of, of journalists all over the world. Now, what happens? Here's the trick. I think they've been honored in some Rolling Stone issue long ago. They, they've been out. Jimmy Dort explains that. I'll put the link if I can. Um, but what happens is now you have some journalists who's, who, is, who basically the CIA has run for years, right? Now he ascends through the journalistic ranks of whatever it is, be it cable or news, or newspapers or magazines or whatever have you. Now what happens is they can retire. The CIA no longer has to, this asset, had had a cushy job, got got some some accolades, maybe even a Pulitzer or two for whatever they were doing, right? And then what happens is, hey, they get a retirement from you know Bezos, or, well now it's Bezos, but the Times or the Buddy or Los Angeles or whoever whatever newspapers out there, and so they're set. Isn't that interesting? You know, as an archivist, I put all that stuff together. I mean, that's why you keep the old people around. Hey, hey keep the old people around. Just use them, but just use use us for information. Don't don't be following us, man. You know, you know, put these people. You know, the, the, the slick head people and all of this. This put them on the side. You don't listen to them. They supposed to have the little crowd to listen. Don't listen to them. Okay, I'm, I'm saying don't follow them. I should say. You know, they should have a little group of people that listen to them. Anyway, I'm waxing on way too long, but you understand what I'm saying. I'm saying that this system is so rigged. So rigged that to unt- untangle it, you need somebody who who's been you know who understands the thing, and, and that's that's our job. But, but our job's not being done. Our job's not being done by the powers that be because it's not in their interest to stop a war <laughs> at all. Who's making money? Think of who's making money. You know, just a little. little Information from me, T. Funda Patterson's taking the train to bit, letting you know what I only suspect. <laughs> Lordy me.